Hey guys, it's Ebony back with another video as promised. In our previous video, we did a Q&A and one of the questions that came up was, do Denise and I plan on having more kids and who's gonna carry and all that good stuff? And I share with you guys that I'm extremely afraid and scared to get pregnant but at the same time, I want to be the one to get pregnant again. I told you guys that I would explain in more greater details because I've never explained in details why I always say my pregnancy with Olivia was horrible. So sit back, relax, because this is the video where I'm going to break it down to you. When Denise and I first decided that we wanted to have kids, we automatically knew that it was going to be me to carry. I always had this desire to be pregnant, to, to experience it, to see what it feels like. So hands down, it was me who was going to be pregnant. Besides, Denise at that point of life had absolutely zero, zero desire to experience being pregnant. When I had went through the fertility journey of having Olivia, all I did was go through a IUI. I was very, very lucky and blessed to get pregnant on the first try. Now, of course, before you go in through any fertility treatments, they usually check your uterus to make sure that you don't have no cysts, no polyps, nothing that can interfere with the pregnancy. And at the time, there was nothing noticeably or strikingly there to make them concerned with me getting pregnant. Bam, I'm pregnant with Olivia, first try. In about the first trimester, so about three months into the pregnancy, I was in severe pain. I actually thought that I was miscarrying because I was just in so much pain. I couldn't stand, I couldn't sit, I couldn't lay down, I couldn't walk. It was like nothing would make me feel comfortable at all. So of course, Denise, um, rushed me to the emergency room. My mom met me there and we were in the emergency room and I was so convinced, even though I didn't see no spotting, no blood, no nothing, I was so convinced that I was having a miscarriage, like there was no heartbeat. It took so long for them to do an ultrasound and all I really wanted was that ultrasound to confirm whether, to pretty much confirm my fear that I was miscarrying. Clearly, that was not the case because I have my beautiful daughter here with us. Um, but what was the case is I was developing fibroids. Apparently, I already had fibroids. They were just super, 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 super small. You really couldn't see it on an ultrasound. But because when I got pregnant, my hormones, the hormones you go through as it, when, you're, when you're going through pregnancy, those hormones increased the size of my fibroids that were always there never knew I had fibroids. I always went through my yearly checkup with the GYN doctor, never was told of any fibroids. It does run in my family. My mom does have fibroids. She actually had really bad fibroids, but I never thought I did. So for those of you who are wondering, and definitely Google this, because I'm sure there's a, a, a better definition than what I'm gonna give you, but fibroids are benign tumors. They're like these little balls of tumors that are non-cancerous. As my pregnancy went on, my fibroids grew larger and larger. They got to the size of about a tennis ball, and I had about three to four of them that was the size of a tennis ball. So my pregnancy felt like I was pregnant with multiples because as Olivia is growing inside of my uterus, because the fibroids were inside my uterus and I had actually one outside of my uterus. As Olivia is growing inside of my uterus, the fibroids are growing with her. They are pulling a lot of her nutrients, so Olivia is working extra hard to get the nutrients from me. In my pregnancy, I had lost. Usually when you're pregnant, you gain. I lost 30 pounds throughout my pregnancy. From the fibroids and the pain of the fibroids, and, and women, and my, my ladies out there, you know when you have fibroids and you're not pregnant, they can be very painful. When you are pregnant, they're even more painful. And especially as Olivia is getting bigger, her weight, she is resting now on my fibroids. Like she was using them literally as cushions. I mean, I was always, always, always hunched. I was always holding my stomach. I used the belly band, but it, it still wasn't giving me the support that I needed. But 
I would literally have to cuff under my stomach and lift it to hold Olivia up off of my fibroids and walk around. And I was still working. I worked literally up until two weeks before I gave birth. There was nothing that they can do about my fibroids. They were growing because again of the hormones, they couldn't remove them because I was pregnant. So I literally had to deal with the entire pregnancy with these fibroids. The day I delivered Olivia, I was in labor for 33 or 32 hours. And I remember the doctor pushing me that far because she was convinced and she was confident that I was going to be able to push her out. Because if they had done a C-section with me, they definitely would have ruptured the fibroids, of fibroids, some of the fibroids, and I would have bled. I would have bled a lot. And they would have had to have on standby blood to donate back to me and do a blood transfusion. The doctor did not, when I say she did not want to put me through all of that. So she had me lay there in labor for all that time until I was dilated to 10 centimeters to push Olivia out. So pretty much that is the reason why I always say I had the most difficult, craziest pregnancy ever. Now, in present time, we do want more kids or definitely I want more kids and I actually do have somewhat of this desire to become pregnant again just one more time. I guess there's this part of me that feels that I need a do-over in a sense like maybe I'll have a better experience this time. Are the fibroids still there? Yes they are. Luckily for me when after I had Olivia and my hormones went back down to equilibrium the fibroids shrunk. They shrunk back to a, not the, not the way they were before I got pregnant, but to a manageable size. They are still all there inside of me. My stomach will never be flat because they will always have a resting home there. If I do choose to get pregnant, I would literally have to have surgery to first remove them. The thing about fibroids is that once you remove them, they can come back and they can come back even bigger and they can come back like with a vengeance. So there's a lot for me to have to weigh out with me being the one to get pregnant again. Do I want to move them? Because right now, knock on wood, since I've had Olivia, they have not bothered me at all. My cycles are normal, everything is normal, back to normal. But if I have this surgery, will removing them cause me problems down the line in life? I don't know. So lots for us to think about, talk about. Adoption has never been crossed off of our list. Um, I do want at least one more, so stick around in this channel and see what happens. Is it something that we're going to do? If we do, you guys will be right there with us, a part of this journey with us. Share, my, my, my ladies out there, pregnant, sh tell me how was your pregnancy? Share your stories down below. If you have fibroids, share those. What do you do to kind of keep them manageable? Did you have your fibroids removed? Anything related to this topic, just comment down below. You know I love interacting with you guys. Make sure to follow us on all of our social media platform. All right, you guys, it is Team Two Moms. One, two, three. Peace.